Teddy's Eddie's. I say, take it easy there, crowd there. Hello, one, two, three, four. It's meanness time again. <laughs> and we invite you to the cosmic Christmas party in the great big old ether. So good evening, friends of the airwaves. May, may I please, well, before we do anything corny, let's let's get this thing started out here with a proper note of sombrerity. Yes, we have no bananas. We have no bananas today. Oh, we got onions and scallions and radishes and pears. But we got no bananas today. Bubble gum and no kale we got. But, oh yes, we got no bananas. I say we got no bananas today. Oh, they bought us out. We got no bananas. Bapadoo, we got no bananas. I say bananas today. All together now, gang. Let's sing it out. <laughs> Got no bananas today. I say we, we got plenty of green peas. We got yams, we got sweet potatoes, we got even a few, a few squashes. We got no bananas today. We got, I say we got no bananas. No more. Uh, we just run out of bananas, lady. Could I sell you some lettuce? Maybe some, uh... <laughs> well, we better not do that because we'll get busted. But we got no bananas, I say. Uh, yes, I say we got no bananas. We got no bananas, no more. <laughs> We got scallions, we got lemons, we got limes and cherries too. Grapefruits and all them goody things. But, but I gotta tell you, we ain't got, we ain't got no bananas. We's fresh out of bananas today. Sorry, sorry lady. I'm sorry, we got no bananas, no bananas today. I say we ain't got no, no bananas today, Bob. Very nice, wasn't that nice? Did you like that? That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Corny, you're a bad man. Now, the only reason I did this, because I figure, you know, you just got to... You, you, things are getting so mean and so bad everywhere that you just have to take refuge in something. Now, some people take refuge in deep thinking. Others take refuge in good works. As for me, I take refuge in plain silliness. Oh, yes, we ain't <laughs> got no bananas. You know, uh, that... that uh, that's that, that that brings a play. Let's say, you know, it's the end of the week, Friday, the whole scene, you know. And uh, it's always good at the end of the week to look back over the week and look at the good things that have happened, if anything. Do you agree with that, Corny? I mean, there's been a lot of bad stuff. Well, let's take a look at some of the good things. Now, for example, we have a milk strike that's just, just about petering out here in the city, right? Now, that brought out a lot of good things. In fact, I know two heroin pushers down on 10th Street that switched to sell them bootleg Jersey milk. I know one guy that was getting $18 a quart, corner of 10th and Bleecker. He was selling out of the back seat of, a, of an MG. 
And he had it. <laughs> and uh, he, you know, he's a, he, the guy's going straight. He's selling milk. Now, how can you put a guy down? You can't bust him for selling milk. He's going straight. Now, that's, that's a good thing to come out of that milk strike. And, you know, people were buying that bootleg milk who never drank milk because it was bootleg. It was fun to sneak home, you know, with a, with some, you know, some, some sneaky milk that was brought in from Pennsylvania in the dark in the back seat of an old car, you know, with a whole bunch of guys wearing stockings over their heads so nobody would identify them, you know. And uh, so guys were drinking milk that had been drinking bourbon, you know, and I like to see that. In fact, a lot of them took to mixing it. It's a terrible scene. Makes you sicker than a dog, I'll tell you. Of course, I ain't seen many sick dogs lately. I've seen a lot of sick people, not many dogs. But, uh, you know, like this lady comes up to me the other day. She says, you know, I need that like I need a hole in the head. And you know, that's one thing that lady needed was a hole in the head. I think there's a lot of people that need a hole in the head. They get a little fresh air in that head, right? Let the gases out, huh? Oh, yes, we ain't got... Now, what else was good this week? You hear another thing I think? I was thinking about the recession now the other day. And uh, a lot of things are going to be good out of recession. Now, all of you kids that have been have been nostalgic for the Depression, can now experience it firsthand, you know? I mean, go out there and buy yourself a box of apples and uh, go into business, and then a couple of years later, you can write your book. You know, talk about the good old days when people knew what the value of a dollar was. And uh, so that, that, that's something good about it. you got to admit that, Tony, right? There's another thing, too, you got to say that's good about it. I just have been reading in a paper about how they're going to fire all them city employees. Well, now, I ain't got nothing against city employees, but uh, let's put it this way. Uh, if this recession keeps up, that means that the government may wind up even firing itself, because after all, that's all part of the government. Next thing you know, the whole government is gone. It done fired itself, and we can get back to doing what we should always be doing, which is, you know, getting things going again instead of filling out forms and mailing back forms and filling out forms about the ones that they sent to you that was wrong and you got to fill them out again and it winds up back and forth everybody's mailing stuff around nobody's doing any business maybe if they all well see you know there's all that you can look good in any place you right you just got to look at the good things now there's other good things that uh, have come about in the past week that i'd like to uh, you know i'd like to point out for one thing uh, the raise in price of oil now i think that's a good thing really Basically, because it's going to bring back, oh, it's going to bring people back to what we call basics. Basics. There's going to be guys squatting out in the backyard, cooking their bacon late at night over peat fires. <laughs> you know who Pete is, you know that Pete, and there's going to be, you know, all that stuff's going to start coming back, and maybe that's a good thing, actually, when you stop to think about it. In fact, I read that they're going to fire, let's see, how many thousand sanitation workers. You know, if this keeps up, you know what's going to come back? The two-holer, friends. It's going to come back, and then that's going to solve our problem that we got in the, <laughs> there's a big problem, you know, in the fertilizer department. And, and, and uh, you just don't know what, uh, what good may come out of all this. Now, I know one guy over in New Jersey, for example, he had this little store there for years, you know. And, and uh, what did he sell? You know, poor old guy who's 107 years old. He sold kerosene lamps. Well, now, you know there hasn't been a hell of a rousing demand for kerosene lamps. In the last few, a few, you know, a few she-she types, you know, with the Tiffany and the whole thing going, the guys with the pink shirts and all that come in, you know, buy a kerosene lamp because it's so groovy to have a kerosene lamp around the house. But uh, now there's just ordinary walking around people coming in there and they're buying their kerosene lamps and every night they're sitting around there with their kerosene lamp. They got the light bulbs turned off. Why? Because, well, I know one guy that just got three light bulbs in his house and got this three light bulbs in his house and uh, he's got one electric can opener. That's his entire stock of appliances. And just last month alone, his electric bill came to $274.19. And he was only using two of them light bulbs. And he only opened two cans all month. So he has switched to kerosene lamps. And not only that, he's chewing his cans open now. With his teeth. And look what that's doing for his teeth. He's got strong teeth now, I tell you. And uh, so he's, he's returning to basics. Of course, now... The guy that's selling the kerosene down at the end of the block is charging $74 a gallon for kerosene. So uh, who knows where it's going to go. But nevertheless, there's a good thing in everything. You see that? Now, I just want to point out to you, all of you people been walking around griping, you may be griping about the very thing that's going to save your soul. Pow! Just like that. Right? I mean, you know, they say people don't get enough exercise anymore when them two holers come up. 
and get, get popular again. You're going to have a lot of exercise. Getting out there at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're going to run like hell when it's 20 below zero. It's going to get the old blood moving, you know, and you're going to get a flat gut again. You're going to get that clear eye. And I'll tell you, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff coming back. I'll tell you, and all this stuff, all this stuff, friends, is because of what we call today disaster. Right. In fact, you know, I can see the day coming very shortly when guys are going to be going along the, the, the well, the New Jersey Turnpike, and they're going to be riding a horse. Absolutely. And that's going to help the fertilizer problem even more. So, you know, they, they, there's nothing, not, nothing that can't be something good in it. I just say that. And, and look at, look at, look, take, take, for example, now, this, this, all this business of, of uh, the electric rates coming up. Do you realize what that's going to do? Why, do you realize that many a house today spends more just operating their color television set than the whole yearly budget of that family combined? Now, they don't know that. I mean, those color TV sets draw more power. They've got some TV sets that are so big and got so much color and got so many circuits in them today, you plug that baby in and you're drawing as much current, let's say, as the city of Trenton in the year of 1973. I mean, you just turn that thing on. So what that's going to do is there's going to be a lot of people are going to be turning their color down first. That won't do them no good. You know, the, you know, the color thing. They're going to say, well, let's watch it in black and white tonight, Madge. That won't save a damn thing. And so the next thing you know, the TV set is going to, going to be on maybe 15 minutes a day in the house. And then there's going to be a lot of yelling and hollering as to what they're going to watch. You agree? And that's going to bring the family together. There's nothing that brings a family together better and quicker than strife. I say that. I say that. And I say that with long experience. You have a fight with a guy, you've made a friend. You notice that, Corny? And so, you know, it's the guy that you just pass in the hall and never say nothing to. He doesn't even know your face. You don't know his. That's the guy that's going to give it to you in the back. But the guy that you're fighting with every day, that's, that's, that's going to be your friend. So if you can develop a few fights in your family over, oh, you know, what you're going to watch on television, that's going to be all part, all much better. At least there's involvement. There's involvement. And that's what our society has lacked. It's involvement with one another. And when you start fighting over whether you're going to watch Walter Cronkite or you're going to watch Cannon, there's going to be plenty of involvement in that family. Plenty. Now, for those that lose the battle, just think how their lives are going to change. Next thing you know, they're just going to have to give up watching TV, and they're going to do nothing but read about it. And who knows what could happen when the habit of reading takes over in this country again. My God, it could just revolutionize the whole world. I mean, people are going to suddenly find out that, that there's, you know, you can read a book and you see all these wonderful pictures in your head. The next thing you know, they're going to say, who, who, who needs cannon? This is WOI New York, friends. Your inspirational station. <laughs> oh, my God. And speaking of inspiration. I'm Fran Allison. On nights when you have trouble falling asleep, what are some of the things you do to help? Well, I sleep with my head at the other end of the bed. Sometimes that helps. I eat. <laughs> I do relaxing exercises, starting with my toes, and I'm usually asleep before I reach my shoulders. On those occasional nights when you have trouble falling asleep, and exercise and counting sheep just don't seem to work, try Compose. Compose simply relaxes and unwinds you, so your body is able to fall asleep more easily. Of course, by falling asleep more easily, you're going to feel better the next morning. So take Compose on those occasional nights when you have trouble sleeping. If you're not satisfied in any way with Compose, mail Compose the box top and they'll send you double your money back. Remember, the more easily you fall asleep, the better you feel the next morning. Compose. Use only as directed. It's guaranteed. My name is Ebenezer Scrooge. Have you got a candy for me? Our name is Schraffs, and have we got a candy for you. So roll your eyes and pat your tummy. Lick your lips, cause yum, yum, yummy. Have we got a candy for you? A chocolate cream and a cherry dream. A jelly slice and a drop with spice. A crispy nut and a cocoa. Like your candy 
be sweet or sour, hard or soft, crispy or creamy, Schraff's has it all wrapped up for Christmas. From a little bag of Schraff's Starlights to a gold chest of Schraff's chocolates. Well, pat my tummy. I hate to admit it, I like that commercial. That's 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 admitting a really basic weakness. Yeah, we got the candy for you. Uh, say, here's the latest uh, chicken joke, which you've only heard 7,942 times now on the radio. Here's the latest chicken joke from Steak and Brew. I won't I won't tell you the punchline. I'll let you think about it. After all, are our kids listening? Okay. Uh, actually, chickens are no joke at uh, Steak and Brew. They're inflation fighters. A great savings offer <laughs> you and your family can't afford to miss. This is one of the most enigmatic spots that we have here. If you're interested in surrealism, you may enjoy the rest of this commercial. Steak and Brew is giving away three-pound chickens absolutely free. And now, I don't know why. It's a steakhouse, right? Okay. But they're giving away chickens absolutely free. You heard right. Steak and Brew. <laughs> It's giving away free chickens. Uh, I love commercials where in the middle of it they say, You heard right. Uh, you heard right. Steak and Brew is giving away free chickens. I guess they assume everyone's saying, What the hell's he talking about? Well, I don't know either. It's part of their great American chicken giveaway in their search for the perfect chicken recipe. Well, uh, what you do is come into your favorite Steak and Brew uh, have dinner for two, Sunday through Thursday, and take home a free chicken. Compliments of steak and brew. I guess they mean a real chicken. For a while, I thought maybe they had, were running a little date service down there, you know. But, uh, uh, I, you know, I've, I, I, that's just my head. So if you'd like to reserve your free chicken, call area 212-490-7000, and you do it right away. Quit fooling around. Become active in today's society. Move. Uh, call area code 212-490-7000. Say, reserve my chicken, please. <laughs> You're going to sound silly doing it, but what the heck. A little silliness never hurt anybody except on the top of the head. Please, if you will, Corny. And then we'll be back with tonight's adventure. Gramercy Park Close of 61 West 23rd Street in New York says, The purpose of this commercial is to sell you a new suit, a sport coat, a cashmere overcoat, some slacks. The only way you'll know about Gramercy Park is for us to buy this radio time and tell you our story. After 78 years of making men's clothing, Gramercy Park began selling direct to the public. Soon Gramercy Park became the place for a certain type of man to go for his clothes. What kind of man? Well, he wears better clothes, but he watches his money very carefully when he buys, especially now. So if you're not a snob about fancy stores and fancy labels, Gramercy Park will show you some brand new men's suits and coats that are a lot better looking than you thought you could get at these prices. Open to 7, Saturday to 6, and on Sunday from 10 to 5. That's Gramercy Park Close. The address is 61 West 23rd Street, New York. Yes, of course, certain kind of man. La da 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 dee 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 dee. Hey, listen, uh, I uh, I just got a note from a kid. Says, Hey, Shepherd, uh, I can't figure it out. He says, Every night I go to sleep here. He says, I go to this school and they make us go to bed at nine o'clock. He said, And even though I'm asleep and in bed, and nothing's turned on in the house. I still keep hearing your show. <laughs> I said, well, all right, kid. He says, Can you explain that? And uh, he goes to one of these elegant. Uh, Male finishing schools up in Connecticut. You know, there is the male finishing school. Kid gets the right tie and all that sort of thing, you know. He goes on later uh, to go to Yale. Becomes very official. Uh, I wonder whether or not uh, when the coming depression really hits, whether or not the Yaleys, uh, when they're out there selling, uh, you know, their fruit on the street corner, I presume they'll be selling avocados. And, uh, you know, just the ordinary walking guy that graduates from CCNY, he'd be out there selling them cheap apples, right? <laughs> well, uh, see, that's what's called uh, disaster humor. That's called gallows humor. Wherever you uh, happen to be standing on the scaffold there, you enjoy a little chuckle now and again as you're on your way to total misery, right? But uh, you'll enjoy that. Oh, yes, I, I look forward, as our, as our world gets worse, 
as it gets more difficult to live in it, you're going to see a tremendous upsurge in my industry, humor. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, that's why uh, all the great uh, comics, you know, the classic great comics, the Fred Allens and all that, all proliferated during the Depression. Absolutely, there was a cause and effect there. But, uh, the, you're not funny when you got dough in your pocket. Oh, and there's nothing funny. I mean, that's why during the affluent days, there weren't many comics working that were any, you know, were thing. A lot, few ethnic guys walking around, but, but, uh, they were just talking about how tough it is to be ethnic. But, uh, <laughs> the great classic comics talk about how great it is and how tough it is just to be alive. See, that, that, that covers a lot more territory. But, uh, when we're all in the same boat and the boat is sinking, there's always one guy sitting in the back there, bailing like hell and making smart remarks. Everybody else is laughing, you know, as they're going down for the third time. And uh, they said, we're all in it together. So, you know, anyway, this kid writes, he says, Shepard, I keep hearing you on the radio. He says, and you're, I know, he says, there's no radio in this room. I keep hearing you. Well, now I'm going to explain something to you. This is a serious time here on the show. No, wait a minute. I'm, I'm having a little problem with this thing here. Yeah, that's better. It's a serious time. Now I'm ready to lay some serious radio theory on you. It is quite possible for this kid to be in his sack at night in this elegant male finishing school up there in, uh, and quite often those male finishing schools really do finish the kid. He's done. The rest of his life, he's got concrete between the ears. And that's what happens to a lot of ladies that go to those lady finishing schools, too, because I had dated a few. <laughs> George, I know one girl that was born wearing a girdle. Well, I mean, you know, that's all personal. We don't want to get into personal things here, do we, gang? But uh, nevertheless, uh, oh, you do. Oh, you really do, huh? Well, I, I have to answer that kid's letter because it's a serious question. He wants to know how he can hear uh, the radio shows on his, you know, just there. He's there, and all of a sudden he hears it. It's 9 o'clock at night. He's trying to get to sleep. Well, I'll tell you, kid. First of all, you shouldn't be going to bed at 9. Right, for starters, that's a bad habit to get into. Uh, you know the old canard, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man wealthy, healthy, and wise, or healthy, wealthy, and wise. You know, yeah, 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 you know, you've heard that, that jazz. No way. That's absolutely not true. The richer you are, the later you get up. Unfortunately. And, uh, the more powerful you are, the later you come into the office. As a matter of fact, we got guys that are so powerful around this radio station now who have not even been into the office for over three years. We got one guy that's been in Bermuda since 1969. He runs the whole thing. He just calls in every couple of months. And uh, that's true power, kid. Uh, so, so you better learn these things. Uh, Winston Churchill, for example, he, he you know, they're, they're, they're doing uh, documentaries on Churchill now, the greatest, most powerful man in history, right? Why, Churchill did not get up before noon after he was four years old. And what's more, every morning, what did he have for breakfast at noon when he woke up? <laughs> uh, he had a seven-foot cigar, and he had a schooner of brandy that weighed maybe six pounds. Now, there is not the kind of thing that you're taught in school. You do not have your breakfast. You do not have a, an elegant Napoleonic brandy and a Havana cigar for breakfast, right? At noon. Well, that's what Churchill did, and he recommended it, and he lived to be damn near 90. He was the pain of every diet freak in the world. I mean, he just proved everything wrong. So, uh, maybe he was right. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not gonna hear, argue with you, kid, about getting to bed at nine. I don't know why I brought that up, but nevertheless, it, it, let's assume that you do have to go to bed at nine for whatever reason. Maybe they throw you in the sack and tie you down. That may be it. But, uh, whatever it is, it is possible for you to hear me at night without any radio equipment around you. Did you know that? It is possible. In fact, they just recently had a case in Chicago where, uh, everybody in this apartment house got really bugged because they were here in this rock station 24 hours it was only 24 hour a day deals you know they were, they were they, they it was strictly acne music you know they had 24 hours a day of rock acne rock and it was coming out of the johns in the entire apartment house well uh, it's okay you know if you if you're one of these 24 hour a day type you just come in there and the john is playing rock and the, the sink is playing rock and all that stuff and, uh, but if you're, if you're, if you're a nice little old lady and you're one of the Lawrence Welk mainliners, 
it's not so, <laughs> you know, two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you start hearing David Bowie come roaring out of the sink. Well, uh, uh, he doesn't really roar. Let's say uh, he comes oozing out of the sink. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the, the, the problem is real, and, and we'll have to face this. And we're going to tonight give you a brief lecture in what we call uh, dissimilar metal rectification. <laughs> you didn't know you two did to get that, did you? Well, I want to tell you a little story about that. One of, the, one of the new problems, there's a new kind of pollution you may not know about it. And that is, as the cities grow out into the suburbs, and people grow more and more out, they're living out there in the boondockies, they are beginning to surround the areas where great, powerful radio transmitters used to be isolated. So you have a 50,000-watt transmitter. This is what we got here, you know, 50 kilowatts, and that's a lot of RF power, buddy. You cannot compare those to light bulbs. So if you hear the term 50,000 watts, what do you mean 50,000 watts? Hell, we burn that much alone with your curling iron here, baby. No way. This is a 50,000 watts of RF power, you know. Oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's like a, that's like an operating nuclear bomb. Now, when you, when you move out, see, and the next thing you know, you see those little lights off in the horizon there? Well, that's a 50,000 watt radio tower there. Now, a few years ago, you'd have been maybe 20 miles from that. Now, you know, you bought a little place called Kilowatt Acres, and uh, you and your family moved into that nice little house there, and uh, you got that great big funny-looking thing sticking up a half a mile away, and you wonder why the fillings in your teeth get hot all the time. Well, uh, it's because you moved out there right next to that great big mother, and it's just laying it out. Well, now, <laughs> ordinarily, it causes no problem. This is not interference. Don't think of it in terms of interference. It's anything but interference. It is performing its function perfectly. It is you who are beginning to break down. Now, you know that if you take two dissimilar metals, not all, but two dissimilar metals, and you bring them into conjunction, these two metals together, you, you form a, a, a kind of rectifier. Now, what is a rectifier? Well, that's, for want of a better name, uh, uh, <laughs> rectification. Uh, we could go into the, uh, the exact definition of what it is, but let's put it this way. It is a primitive radio receiver. In fact, all radio receivers, television sets, all electronic equipment have rectifiers in them. Some are more subtle than others. But uh, if you take it, the, the filling in your teeth, it's very easy for you now in today's life to be walking around and you figure, what the hell, I'm going crazy. I can't help it. I'm hearing voices. I can't. Uh, have you ever had the sensation that your head is, 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 uh, is beginning to heat up? Have you ever had that feeling? Have you ever had the feeling that, you, that the, you, you notice those pressures that sometimes you get over your left ear? Have you felt that throbbing at times? Have you wondered what that is? You've come to the right spot. In just a moment, we will solve your problem. Someday you'll own. Someday you'll own. Someday you'll I'm in just own. great voice tonight. Sooner or later you own the generals. Notice how subtle and sneaky that is sung. Whether you drive a sports car, a sedan, an Irish male, a compact, a tricycle, or a limousine, General Tire has exactly the tires you need at prices that even poor old sad busted you can afford. Choose from steel belted tires, glass belted original equipment tires, magnificent wide raised white letter tires. Oh, these are tires. These are tires that will eventually be collected as objet d'art. So see the tire professionals at your General Tire headquarters. You'll know why they then, sooner or later, sooner or later, yes, you'll own generals. Sooner or later, I say, you'll own generals. Yeah, 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 yeah. The people at the Barnes & Noble bookstore would like to remind you that books make wonderful Christmas gifts. Hey, Phyllis, here's a book on sailing for your Uncle Ted. No, sailing was last year. Now he's into homemade wine and antique furniture. Oh, well, do we get him this wine book or one on antiques? Uh, why don't we get him both? How come you're so smart? <laughs> At Barnes & Noble, we've got a whole world of books to choose from, especially books for people who like to do things. For instance, we've got books for people who like to garden, 
Books for cooks, books for backpackers, and just about anything else you can think of. In fact, we've got more books on how to do more things than any other bookstore in the world. And they all make thoughtful, enduring gifts for Christmas or any other occasion. So this year, bring your Christmas list to the Barnes & Noble Bookstore at 5th Avenue and 18th Street in Manhattan. And don't forget to put your own name on the list. After all, don't you deserve a book from Barnes & Noble, too, this Christmas? Buddy-o, if you live near a D'Agostino, here's another reason to be glad. Aren't you glad you live near a D'Agostino? I mean, really, that's one of the things that you have to be thankful for in this world, right? Count your blessings, buddy. Every D'Agostino is featuring Rondell, or rather Rondelay, I'm sorry. Rondelay cheese this week, and it's just 69 cents for a four and a half ounce package. Uh, you probably tasted the garlic and herbs spiced cheese flown in from France, where Rondelay is the same wonderful type made fresh every week in Wisconsin by a team of dynamic French and American cheese makers. So, Rondelay comes in three varieties. Spicy pepper. <laughs> Sounds like a strip teaser, doesn't it? Garlic or herbs. Try some this week. D'Agostino Rondelay. That wouldn't be a bad name for a stripper, wouldn't it? A little spicy pepper out there. I have always thought another great name for a for a stripper would be Patchy Fog. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I I keep thinking of these things. Uh, I I keep thinking of, for example, uh, great names for rock groups. Igneous Rock. How about that? Do you like that one? How about uh, the uh, How about uh, uh, how about Al in the Rock Garden? That's bad, isn't it? No, it doesn't make it, right? Uh, I still think my favorite rock group, though, my, I keep creating these rock groups in my mind, uh, is uh, still uh, my favorite one. Is the... Uh, no, no, I better not lay it on you. That's trouble, you know. The world hasn't grown up yet, not at least to my level. Certainly not. But uh, I would like to say, though, it is possible for you to hear, if you wish. Uh, you could hear. To, can you imagine what would happen? See, you don't know what frequency, though, that your impacted uh, molar tooth, the one with the filling in it, you don't know what frequency it's tuned to. So it may drive you right out of your bird. Now, I'm going to give you uh, a little brief uh, lesson here in basic, uh, well, not really. Well, yeah, I suppose you'd call it electronics. It's, a, it's basic... Uh, basic what we call radio theory, which is, of course, electronics. Now, uh, <laughs> this takes many forms. Uh, it, a radio set is merely a finite piece of uh, equipment that was put together by a whole lot of different uh, diverse elements being brought together, right? You know, that's all it is. Let's face it. It's not magic, although there are many people who think it is uh, magic. Yes, radio is magic to a lot of people. Television, how do those funny little color pictures come through there? How come we can see all those people with the green faces? And the, what makes it do that? I mean, if you believe in voodoo, uh, you could very well explain it that way. You, you agree? I mean, it's a uh, <laughs> the curse of, curse of the Western world. There are devils in the air. Uh, that could be explained. Uh, and it possibly there may be some truth in that. I mean, I'm not going to put it down. But uh, one thing you must understand, that as you walk around in your life, all of us, every last one of us, man, woman, child, dog, pig, uh, squirrel, turtle, all of us, every last one of us, we are walking around in the 20th century in a sea of radiation of one kind or another. Not, we're not talking about radiation in the terms of, uh, let's say, debilitating radiation, uh, say, uh, from uh, radium or, uh, uh, say, something like uh, atomic radiation. This is what we call electronic radio. In other words, RF, radio frequencies. Now, these are possible to be picked up. In fact, they're put in the air, so they are picked up. And so this stuff is floating around millions, not really floating, just surrounding us. And it, and it ranges all the way from UHF to what, what we call low, long, long wave, low frequencies, LORAN, uh, radar, all that stuff is floating around there. Now, you don't know what frequency, though, that your tooth is tuned to. You've got this uh, metal in your tooth, see? 
So that low humming sound that you hear constantly in the back of your head could very well be a uh, navigational aid for 747s. And if you turn to your left, it may get stronger. If you turn to your right, it may sort of fade out. And uh, if you notice, if you're walking cross town, going east and west, it may be louder. And as you walk further east, it gets louder and louder. Until as you approach the Holland Tunnel, or, the, or rather the, the Lincoln Tunnel, maybe it gets, fades out. Then you go over the other way, down, down, down towards the Triberry Bridge, it gets louder and louder. And you think, I'm going crazy. Well, no, actually, you're not going crazy at all. You're on the beam. You are, you are, you are picking up a beam, and, and uh, you may be picking up an omni, for example. And once in a while, a little voice says, uh, for example, uh, uh, the little voice may say, uh, "All temperature setting twenty nine point nine two," and uh, you wonder, what the hell is this? See, what is this? You think you're going crazy? Well, I know one guy. It's a terrible scene. You know, you know how all of us try to get away from bad news from time to time. We do, we do. Some people do it by just a uh, drinking themselves, insensible. Uh, others hide under the day bed. Uh, there are guys who go out to Las Vegas and squander all their dough to get away from it, right? Well, I know one guy, and this is a, this is the, the, one of the saddest cases I know. I know one guy whose fillings in his teeth were tuned to W-I-N-S, and 24 hours a day, whether he was asleep or awake, he heard bad news! This guy had to move to the state of Utah to get away from W-I-N-S. You know, they're on 1010 on a dial. He got all the way out to Utah, and he got this Pimple Rock station. And that guy is listening to Pimple Rock now 24 hours a day. He's moving around the country. He's trying to find a middle-of-the-road station. I says, look, friend, why the hell don't you get your tooth pulled? He says, what do you mean? I've only got four left, and i got to get that one pulled out of your mind? So, friends... There's many things under the light of the midnight sun. Cabbages and kings. Many things are working to rot your brain. And that reminds me. The current issue of TV Guide magazine revisits the Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1962, the world tottered on the brink of nuclear war. Writer David Halberstam recalls the mood of the nation and the White House during those days as television prepares a special on the crisis. In the same issue, a look at the cornerbacks, safeties, and roverbacks who make up pro football's deep defense. They comprise the moving nightmare of passing quarterback faces. A special sports report on the men who make the interceptions. This week, TV Guide's cover story profiles an actor who has been described as having the neck movement of an automatic sprinkler and a physique that resembles a six-foot tuning fork. A conversation with Jimmy Walker of Good Times in TV Guide, America's biggest selling magazine. TV Guide, on sale everywhere. This is Tommy Makeham. I'm sitting in the John Barleycorn, located at 209 East 45th Street, just off 3rd Avenue. <laughs> John Barleycorn is New York's first and most famous Irish singing pub. If you want a sample of what Irish hospitality is really like, you should come in and soak up the atmosphere. The hospitality is warm, the people are cheerful, and the service is just fantastic. They have an old saying at the Barleycorn, there are no strangers here, only friends you haven't met. And you can prove that to yourself by dropping in any time. You can have lunch, dinner, or supper seven days a week. And a good time all the time. The food is fit for royalty, and as a matter of fact, some of the recipes have been handed down from the ports of Irish kings. The John Barleycorn, the Irish oasis in midtown Manhattan. Hey, uh, Sunday's New York Times tells you, tells you a lot that could make Christmas more fun. Uh, for example, in a special holiday entertainment guide, Sunday's Times tells you about a puppet show with real people. Oh, my God, that's really scary. A puppet show with real people. I know at least three major companies where that's been going on for years. For heaven's sakes, the Times is making it formal now. And they say it's fun. Well, it depends <laughs> on what puppet you're playing. I mean, if you're playing Punch, it's one thing. If you're playing Judy, it's another, friend. 
But uh, nevertheless, oh, that's a nice little bit of alliteration there. <laughs> but uh, this, all this fun stuff is in this week's New York Times. Find out how to make a real live puppet show out of all your friends. Invite in the neighborhood kids, and they can see old Uncle, old Uncle Grubbage there, hang from the strings and do his famous dance. But uh, nevertheless, the New York Times over this weekend should be a really zingy, uh, fantastic issue. In fact, they say that as, as we get closer to Christmas, you can tell how close we are to Christmas by how much the Sunday Times weighs. And they say you better bring your wheelbarrow this week, buddy, and get a couple of friends, too, to help you carry it home. So, it's the New York Times. It's going to be an exciting weekend issue. <laughs> See, it doesn't make any difference. Turning me off doesn't help you. I'm coming in now through your through your upper canines. Right, to bring it in there, Corny. Fine. Uh, you didn't think you had canine teeth, did you? Well, that's because we're basically meat eaters, flesh terrors. Oh, I don't have teeth of that sort. Who is this person here? I'm a vegetarian. The only way you can become a true vegetarian, honey, is to have all your teeth removed and have uh, bovine choppers installed. I think you will become a ruminant. And you wind up wandering around out in the field chewing your cud, which is probably what your husband's been thinking you've been doing for years anyway. Please. Da, da, dee, dee, dee. <laughs> it will do you no good to write an angry letter. It's too late, madam. <laughs> He makes a lot of sense, that man. What the hell are you talking about, George? He's a madman. Every man blows his own kazoo in the great skittle band of existence. Yes, we have no bananas. We got radishes and grapefruit and da da dee dee dee. That's been censored, but we have no bananas today. Da 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 dee dee dee. <laughs> and so soon before our holiday season. Da da dee dee dee. Da da. Oh wow! This is W O R New York. Stay tuned for in conversation.